Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Five Minute Gaming News, the show that it's it's. I mean, it's still here. In news that's sure to make all of us old timers sad, Sega is leaving the arcade business. After 56 years of producing games for arcades across the world, Sega is finally out. The process officially started two years ago when Sega sold 85% of its business to Tokyo-based company Genda. And now, finally, the rest of the stock is gone, and Genda is removing any Sega logos from arcades. And while here in the West, and definitely for a lot of younger people, arcades aren't really a big deal, and, and Sega being removed from arcades isn't really a big deal, many people probably haven't been to arcades for years. Some people probably never. But in Japan, it's a pretty big deal. There's a lot of upset but resigned gamers. Mostly who understand the news comes at a time when arcades are less frequented in general, but also because of COVID. It was really only a matter of time before Sega left the world of arcade gaming. But for those of us who remember the good old days, it's, it's, it's a sad day indeed. I'll never forget walking around with a cup of quarters looking for Golden Axe or Virtua Fighter. Those are good times indeed. In other news that is... Very specific to me in this channel, the Dark Pictures Anthology is getting more games. I mean, we already knew that, but at least five more titles after the next entry, The Devil and Me. Following their smash hit until dawn, supermassive games embarked on their quest to tell a new anthology horror tale, one that had its hits and misses, but it looks like they've got more than enough chances to score some hits with upcoming titles like Directive 8020, Oh, Death and Winterfold in the works. I, for one, am hyped to play these games. It just means a good time with my friends. Even if sometimes we don't enjoy the endings, it still is a good time and I am here for that. Also, speaking of things that people are apparently here for, over a million people have pre-ordered the new DLC, The Witch Queen for Destiny 2 which is, I'm sure, great news for Sony. If you've been out of the loop and you don't quite know what the big draw is for Bungie's next DLC for Destiny, well, if you pre-ordered the DLC, you get access to a full year's worth of content at a big discount rather than just paying for it as it releases. So for many players, it would be stupid not to pre-order. Obviously, I hear a voice saying, we don't pre-order, but in this case, I understand very much why fans would, and more importantly, if it's a long-term game, and it's one of those things you're gonna be playing for a year, two, three more years, it makes financial sense to buy in now. And for those of you out there who are like, people still play Destiny? You're about to find out how many do when the new DLC launches later this month. Speaking of later this month, something we probably should have done Monday, but there was a lot of news. Many releases, so many releases for February, and we might as well just rattle off a few right now. Obviously, we'll get back to doing weekly releases next week, but for now, this is what's coming this month, and it's a lot. Friday, we see the release of Dying Light 2, Techland's sequel to the incredibly fun zombie romp is finally here. Don't get caught after dark, stay high and away from all the hordes, and uh, also don't forget to loot everything. Next week, and I'm sure we'll come back to it then, Sifu Drops, a kung fu game where a magical amulet saves you from death, but takes years from your life. So basically you become like an old kung fu badass in a video game and who doesn't want that? Later this month, we get Total War Warhammer 3. It's finally coming, chaos reigns and may it rain forever. Very excited for that one. Also, for those of you who are like me, who enjoy a good button mashing murder mayhem spree of a man worth a thousand, Dynasty Warriors Empires comes out. Then also this month is the interesting looking horror game, Martha is Dead. It's finally gonna get its chilling release and uh, I'm very excited for this one. I have been watching this for a while. I don't even know what to expect, honestly. And then we finally get to the big ones. Horizon Forbidden West, the follow-up to my girl Aloy's first adventure in the world of robot dinosaurs comes out. And then the one everyone is super hyped for, Elden Ring, finally makes its way into people's homes to, I assume, murder them. I can't wait to watch someone who's actually good at it play through it for me. <laughs> super excited for that. But that's not all. There are JRPGs and MMOs and indie titles, and there's so much in February, and then March, equally insane. It's it's a pretty good time, if not overwhelming time, to be into video gaming. So, excited for what is to come. Anyway, 
that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I will see y'all tomorrow with another 5-Minute Gaming News.